In terms of patients' quality of life questions, usually it centers around the major symptoms. Uh, they're having to do with whether or not they're near a bathroom, how frequently they have bowel movements, the quality of those bowel movements, uh, any pain associated with the bowel movements, and then uh, the flushing can often be uh, noticeable to other people, and some of the patients are self-conscious about that. And then, of course, if they have wheezing, uh, whether or not that's being addressed. There are multiple quality of life scales which have been validated, and we use these routinely when patients are on clinical trials to evaluate the effectiveness of a particular therapy. So as a medical oncologist and a neuroendocrine oncologist, I use this type of thing all the time when patients are on research studies. A lot of similar questions I could ask even when patients are not on studies, but there are certainly validated instruments. I actually have a form built into the electronic medical record that makes me do what's called a hard stop. I can't go to the next question unless I answered this question. The questions are, how many days a week do you have diarrhea? How many bowel movements a day do you have? Describe that bowel movement. There's a thing called the Bristol stool scale that goes from one to seven. Uh, you know, one being a hard stool like rabbit pellets, seven being watery diarrhea. How many days a week do you have flushing? How many episodes a day uh, of flushing do you have? How long does that flushing last? Do you wheeze? All those kinds of things are part of assessing quality of life. So all these things have to be distinguished and uh, from each other, and specific treatments need to be developed for each person individually. Not everybody has diarrhea, not everybody has flushing, not everybody has asthma-type symptoms, and certainly not everybody has carcinoid heart disease.